this video, we are going to drive the Dalton Highway, one of North America's most remote and dangerous roads, from Fairbanks all the way to Dead Horse, just a few miles off the Arctic Ocean, through Boreal Forest, the Brooks Range, and the tundra of the North Slope. We'll cross the Arctic Circle and experience the midnight sun. Over the next few days, we're going to the northernmost point you can drive to on the American continent. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and good morning. Well, technically it's not morning yet. The time is 1.40. Sunset was about an hour ago, 12.44 a.m. And sunrise will be at 3.02 a.m. <laughs> so, this is basically midnight and the sun, the, the, you know, it's, it's still light outside. Now, where we're going next, uh, this is gonna be even more drastic because the sun is never gonna set. So, let's head to the Arctic. If you haven't guessed, today we're going to the Arctic Circle. I've got my Dalton Highway Guide, so let's do it! The Dalton Highway officially begins 80 miles north of Fairbanks, at the Living Good Junction. The first 10 miles are going to be on the Steez Highway, which so far is in great condition. And our first stop is coming up, actually, at this pullout where you can see the Alieska pipeline up close. And they have interpretive signs and artifacts, and I can already see it. Stopping here is of great significance in the context of our trip, because the construction of this pipeline was the very reason for the road we're about to take. Well, this is one of the few places where you get to see the pipeline up close. Uh, if you recall, a couple of days ago we uh, went to another spot where you can see it, but here you can actually stand under it. So, um, let's check it out and uh, see some of these artifacts. They have like the pegs, which are the devices they use to, to cling to service, you know, to the pipeline. Of course, we're going to be seeing a lot more of the pipeline as we continue driving north on the Dalton, but uh, this is probably as close as we're going to get. Here's an award from the American Welding Society, and this device is called PEGS. This first one was used to scrape wax buildup when the pipeline started operations, and then replaced by this one, used for cleaning and flow improvement. Okay. Here's that retired pig, and uh, pretty cool. Uh, they send them on the pipeline, and uh, you know they monitor uh, things. They clean the pipeline. It's um, it's very interesting. Well, now continue north. The next stop. It's not quite the Arctic Circle yet. The next stop is actually the beginning of the Dalton Highway. Still about two hours away. And these are those pipes used to dissipate heat and protect the permafrost. So we are here. This is the Arctic Circle. And eventually we'll make it to Proto Bay. We continue on Alaska Highway 2, the Steez Highway in this section. As we approach Fox, there's a fork on the road. If we were to make a right, we would continue on the Steez Highway, Alaska Highway 6, which dead ends at a town called Circle, on the bank of the Yukon River. Although it is not quite at the Arctic Circle, it is still a whole degree of latitude south. Going straight, we enter the Elliott Highway, which we are going to drive for about 70 miles. It is paved, so that's a good thing. We're starting to get some frost heaves, and there's construction going on. I have a feeling road conditions are going to start deteriorating here real soon. That's gotta be a boring job, holding that stop sign all day long, but 
almost gotta do it, right? There's the pipeline, and we're going to see a lot of it during the next few days, since it parallels the road all the way to Prudhoe Bay. It is becoming a bad roller coaster ride with all these frost heaves. Let's stop real quick to see how everything is doing back there. Well, the Elliott Highway, so far, worse than I expected, worse than I remembered. So, let's see how everything fared in here. No, so far, so good. Yeah, besides this, Everything else seems to be in place. The Dalton Highway, 14 miles. We're almost there. And before you ask, yes, Minitini 4 came with solid steps, but we thought it would be more practical to have a step ladder for this particular trip, since we're going to be camping at tight places in all kinds of uneven terrain. Here's Living Good Junction, the beginning of the Dalton Highway. There are signs warning about heavy industrial traffic. And this is where the pavement ends. For the next 416 miles, we have a theoretical speed limit of 50 miles per hour, but I doubt we're going to be able to go that fast most of the time. Well, yeah, this will be the ultimate road trip for Starship Amenitini 4. We are doing the Dalton Highway <laughs> and uh, yeah we did this back in 2010 but just with a with a Jeep and um, we're going from Fairbanks here all the way to Prudhoe Bay which is I mean the road ends just a few miles from the Arctic and then we're gonna take a tour from there and yeah this road was originally made just for the construction of the pipeline and it wasn't even open to the public until the 1980s if memory if what I read is correct. And um, yeah, here's some information about the construction of the pipeline. Oh, we've been anticipating this moment for such a long time. All right, it's gonna be a long, a long road ahead. It's 414 miles and 50 miles to the first services, which is, um, I believe it's 50 miles, the Yukon River. So, Let's get underway today. We're only gonna make it to the Arctic Circle though. Uh, you know, we're gonna take it slow. Here goes nothing. This first section is pretty rough. There seems to be a lot of construction going on. By the way, the road was named after Alaskan engineer James Dalton, built as a supply road for the pipeline and the Prudhoe Bay oil operations. And that is still its main function. Here's a little bit of history. In 1966, the North Slope was open for oil extraction, and soon after, the road was built. But that first road ended up being a failure due to poor engineering, thawing permafrost, and the harsh conditions of this remote area. The final road and the pipeline would not be completed until 1977. Then, in 1981, the road was partially open to the public, and the entire length in 1994. By the way, road conditions have improved a little bit, but I'm afraid it may not last. I knew it, we have more construction coming up. I have a feeling these construction delays are going to be more the norm than the exception, but what can you do? I guess this is the price you pay for driving the most remote road in America. Here we are following a pilot car. Pavement, ever so briefly. It 
it is otherwise a beautiful drive. This coming up here on the left would have been our first stop, our first point of interest, the Hess Creek Overlook, but it is closed due to construction, which is a real bummer because I wanted to reenact our 2010 trip as closely as possible. As I mentioned, we've been here before. In fact, driving the Dalton was the main reason we came to Alaska for the first time back in 2010. And here's the story. Sometime, I want to say in the mid-2000s, I was doing some travel research online, as you do, surfing the interwebs. Like, what's the coldest city in the world? It turned out to be a city in Siberia. I think we're gonna save that one for a future date. Then I searched highest paved road in America. That was Mount Evans, which we eventually did in 2014. Northernmost road in the world, that was the North Cape in Norway, which we eventually also did in 2018. The northernmost road in America turned out to be this one, the Dalton. That seemed somehow more feasible. Around that time, we also started watching a reality show called Ice Road Truckers, in which a group of semi-truck drivers competed, hauling loads up the Dalton during the icy winter months. So we started investigating the logistics of actually driving this road, Rental companies do not allow their vehicles on the Dalton, and RV rentals only to the Arctic Circle. There are special outfitters in Fairbanks, however, that will rent you an all-wheel drive SUV for the ultimate adventure, so that's what we did back in 2010, 13 years ago. We always thought it would be cool to attempt this with an RV, having our own bathroom, and being able to stay at several campgrounds along the way. We had everything planned for 2020 then 2020 happened. Now we are finally able to do it, this reprise of our 2010 adventure, and we are super stoked, even if it doesn't end up being exactly the same experience. There it is, our first sighting of the mighty Yukon River, our next stop along the Dalton. Here we are crossing the Yukon, on the wooden deck of the E.L. Patton Bridge, the only bridge crossing the Yukon in Alaska. And this is where we're going to stop, Yukon Camp. They have a restaurant, a hotel, convenience store, and most importantly, fuel. The bridge over the Yukon was completed in 1975, and it is pretty impressive. The bridge also carries the pipeline. And down there, the small cabin, is the Yukon Crossing Contact Station, with interpretive signs, and then the Yukon River Camp. And yes, that is the whole thing. A small settlement in an otherwise vast wilderness. Very interesting how the bridge was built on a slope, too. One end higher than the other. You don't see that every day. Beautiful landscape looking towards the southwest. All right, let's have lunch. Making sandwiches at the Yukon River. Well, here we are, this is the Yukon camp. We just had some sandwiches for lunch. Although, in there, they have a small restaurant, you know, burgers and stuff. They have a, I believe it, that, that is like a small hotel. And most importantly, gas. This is one of two other places where we're gonna find services on the road. So we're gonna fill up here and then head to the Arctic Circle. But first, let's check out the Yukon River. Now crossing the Dalton by foot. And there's the pipeline. I told you we were gonna see lots of it. I wonder if this is firewood. Let's go into the visitor center. Here we go, here we have some information about the bridge, the Alaska pipeline. 
Let's walk swiftly because the mosquitoes are relentless and very numerous. This is one of two viewing platforms from where we can see the bridge and the river. There are interpretive signs about the river and the construction of the bridge. I think this might be the last time we're going to be able to get out of the car and seeing things without putting box spray. Unfortunately, the contact station is closed. Let's go back and top off the tank. Well, they have an interesting system here. Uh, you just leave your credit card, you pump, and then uh, you take a picture of how much money you spent, and then you take it back. Which, by the way, 749.9 per gallon. But hey, that's Dalton Highway prices here. This is gonna be an expensive fill-up. <laughs> I did manage to add my sticker to the pump, so if you happen to pass through here, let me know if you can find it. Get on our way. Here's one of the road construction tanker trucks pumping water right off this creek. Pretty cool. And back in the Dalton we are. Just four and a half miles north of Yukon River Camp, there used to be another restaurant that had some pretty good sandwiches. I've heard it's not open anymore though, so let's corroborate. There is indeed a closed gate blocking our way. We're gonna have to reverse. Easier said than done. This is a section of the road with many steep grades, lots of which truck drivers have given names to over the years. This one coming up is called Sand Hill. This one is not so bad, but I think the one coming next, if memory serves, is pretty impressive. This is it. This may be the most famous one of them all. Roller coaster. Look at that sheer drop. Not for the faint of heart. It is very dusty this part of the Dalton. Here we're going to make a detour and drive about a mile up this hill to the 86 mile overlook. Here they're storing all these road construction materials, but the views towards the Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge should be pretty epic. Here we are, check it out. That's some legit dirt on Minitini. <laughs> it's getting thicker, that layer of mud. But, um, well, here we are. This is the 86.5 uh, mile overlook. And, um, just listen to the sound of, of silence up here. You know, I mean, you hear some traffic on the Dalton Highway down there, but. It's very peaceful up here. And down there, the Dalton and the pipeline is always ever present. Well, we're gonna take a five minute break here. Whoops, I think I have a mosquito on my eye. And then we continue. 
Let's enjoy this view for a few minutes. Check it out! I believe those may be some granite tours, a rock formation typical of the tundra. I believe we'll be seeing more soon. There's still a little bit of snow here. Getting dirty up here. Look, look, look at the jack. Here's a really good spot from where you can get a great photo of the Dalton and the pipeline. Let's wait until the dust settles. I believe the zigzag pattern is to allow it to expand and contract with the temperature changes and also to withstand earthquakes. We continue. The pipeline ever present throughout our journey. Here's our next stop, Finger Mountain. Well, we're stopped here at the Finger Mountain Wayside. It's getting chilly. Uh-oh. I hear the water pump. Oh, <laughs> Well, yeah, there are a couple of screws and brackets that were on the floor. I don't know where they belong, but... Other than that, I think... Look at the sewer. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Oh, we need to get water. That's the main thing. We need to get water soon. There it is. Finger Mountain. Pointing towards Fairbanks, actually. Okay, let's check out all these rocks, which I believe are formed by... The permafrost, you know, it's like, it just, they just come up from underground as the ground freezes and thaws. But, by the way, did I mention it is getting chillier? I'm gonna have to get, grab my hoodie the next time we get, get out of the car. Here's some information about Finger Rock, a landmark through time. Let's go on a little hike to the highest point for perhaps a commanding view. Here's some information about these rock formations and how they formed over the course of millions of years. There's the road ahead and the pipeline. As I mentioned, all these rocks are called Tors. And Finger Mountain back there seems to be the biggest one of them all. About our little incident back there, with all the bouncing and vibration, it opened the sink faucet. And I don't really know how much water we lost. Even worse, I don't really know how full our gray tank is. Yes, we have sensors, but they're not all that accurate. And the closest dump station is at the 5-mile campground, which we left behind 40 miles back about an hour ago. According to the BLM map, there's a dump station in Dead Horse, so we're going to keep going. Now, if we can't find that dump station in Dead Horse, the return trip will have to be a little more rushed than the original plan. Of course, showers will be uncommon until we find somewhere to dump the tanks. 
This is another one of those steep grades named by truckers over the years. This one called the Beaver Slide. We have arrived to perhaps the most important landmark of our journey the Arctic Circle, and there is a BLM campground, so this is where we're gonna spend the night. Then again, it will never get dark, so we may not get much sleep. And we've made it to one of the most important landmarks of our trip here, the Arctic Circle. Latitude 6633 on the Dalton Highway, and uh, yeah, we are here, you know, the Arctic Circle surrounds the North Pole, and uh, on this day is, you know, on the on the solstice actually, which happened like what five days ago. Anything north of here doesn't see uh, nighttime, so um, that's why we've been experiencing such long days. And and now, from now on, the sun will not set until we come back south. And here we have several exhibits explaining, you know, uh, the different uh, seasons in this uh, unique env environment here. Fall, of course, yeah, the, the equinox, days and nights are exactly the same. In winter, it's the opposite. It's always dark. And as you can see, eh, well, winter here, you know, the, 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 the area close to the North Pole is always dark. If you come to spring, it's similar to fall, right? A leap into life. And uh, once you get to summer, that's where we are right here. The, the, the area surrounding the Arctic, is there's always light. This is, of course, all due to the, to, to the tilting of, you know, of, the, of the Earth rotation. Um, now I'm going to add my sticker here to the back of the, of the Arctic Circle sign. If you recall, 13 years ago, we actually signed it, but I guess nowadays stickers are the way to go. Okay, here we go. There's uh, not a whole lot of room left, but I'm gonna put it right here. So if you happen to come to the Arctic Circle this year in 23, that's where we are. Let's find a campsite. It's supposed to be BLM land. There's supposed to be a BLM land campground back here. An old Argosy. Cool. So let me tell you what happened. Uh, we left the water pump on, as we usually do, you know, on the road. But we had never taken a road this bumpy. So, um, yeah, apparently with all the bumping up and down, the, the kitchen sink faucet opened up and, and we wasted some precious water. Hopefully. Hopefully we can uh, get more water in cold food. Other than that, as I mentioned, it's structurally speaking, it's held up really well. Yeah, there we found a couple of brackets and screws on the floor that we don't know where they belong, but eventually something will fall off. All right, let's see how this is. I forgot my campsite name. Bear and wolf activity. Hmm. We'll be cautious. So I believe we are in number five. Yep, we're in number five. I'm gonna fill this out and then deposit it over there. There. This is what we're doing. We unhitched and now we're going to go for a midnight ride. Oh, check out the moon. The midnight moon. It is actually just past 1 a.m. and the real solar midnight will happen almost at 2. First, because of daylight savings time and the Alaska time zone is an hour off in central Alaska. We're going to a spot that I've heard is one of the best places to see the midnight sun on the Dalton Highway. So we're driving about 17 miles north to this vantage point called Gobbler's Nub.
Well, I had always heard uh, that Gobbler's Knob here was what was one of the best places to witness the midnight sun, and uh, they were not wrong. This is an, an incredible experience to see how the sun goes, you know, horizontally. At this point, it never sets. You know, that's that's north, exactly north over there, and uh, you know the sun kind of co comes, you know from the west, where, where it would have set normally. This is the lowest point, and eventually it will go back up on the east, but... Yeah, I, I believe that down there is the town of Coldfoot, where we're going tomorrow. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon that only happens here, above the Arctic Circle. We're about 15 miles north of the Arctic Circle, and... Um, yeah, it's it's quite something to see. It's like like a three hour sunset, if you will, that you know, that never happens. <laughs> Down there, by the way, not cold foot. That is pump station number five. And the sun is starting to come back up. Well, it's a little after 2 a.m. and I think the sun is starting to, to come back up. It certainly feels stronger, so um, we're gonna start heading back to the campground. And uh, well, tomorrow will be another day on the Dalton. This may be the one single location when I'm allowed to fly the drone legally at 2 a.m. without any lights. The rule states that you can fly 30 minutes before sunrise and 30 after sunset. And since neither is going to happen here, we're good to go.
We've seen a lot of truck campers on the Dalton. Also, quite a few cyclists. And we're back at Gobbler's Nub, so let's see the view in a different light. Yeah, last night I was thinking it might be cold food, but it's too close to be cold food, so no. Yeah, yeah. No way. We're getting closer to the Brooks Range, arguably the most beautiful part of the drive. Now you know what we haven't seen any of? Wildlife. Here we have our next stop coming up. Did you see that crater in the middle of the road? And here's Grayling Lake. A lake so beautiful. I even wrote a song named after it. Here we have our first major wildlife sighting. Hello, moose. Listen to the sound of silence when there is no traffic on the Dalton. This paved part of the road is really bad, with deep frost heaves and potholes the size of craters. But the views are getting so much better as we approach the Brooks Range. We're almost at Coldfoot, which is the psychological halfway point of our journey, and the only place to get fuel for the next 240 miles. There it is. I can see it. Cold foot. Let's stop by the visitor center first. Now, where have we seen that Airstream Argo Sea before? This is the Arctic Interagency Visitor Center, run by the Bureau of Land Management, the US Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Park Service. I really like this partial globe here. It really illustrates how far north we really are. We are here. Oh, uh, I don't know if it's here. here are some of the animals we may or may not see, including this mean looking grizzly. The doll sheep of Adigan Pass. A lynx preying on a hare. A representation of the midnight sun. Wait, I think it is broken. Let's get some of that precious fuel, so we can make it all the way to the Arctic. Oh wait, this one is diesel. This one is out of order. This is becoming a mission here. The only gas station around and only one pump works. What can I say? It is the Arctic. Well, here we are, filling up at the northernmost uh, drug stop. 7.49 a gallon. But, but there's not another gas station for 240 miles, so I guess that's a deal, considering where we are. All right, let's see if, uh, what we can do. Hmm, someone's delivering something. Someone's getting a delivery. By helicopter. That's something you don't see every day. But I guess when you're this remote, that's the only way to get same-day delivery. I wonder what it is, though, and how much it costs to get something up here by helicopter. Let's get some water. The water fill up, by the way, very on our system. 
I could have filled up and she wouldn't have even noticed. But uh, I, think, I think this is a historic cabin we have here. This thermometer only goes down to minus 60, but it was here that famously, yet unofficially, a record of negative 82 Fahrenheit, but minus 63 Celsius was set, making it the coldest place in the USA. Here, you're allowed to tent camp here in this field. And this back here is the hotel. That's where we stayed back in 2010. And somewhere back then, back there, they have RV hookups. It's just uh, water and electric, no sewer. There's no sewer in the whole uh, uh, Dalton Highway. Luckily, yeah, oh, it looks like it's gonna rain. Luckily, our, our, our gray seems to be almost empty. It's just, yeah. Very, very low pressure. I think it's water from the Coyococ River. An eternity later, we are back on our way. Next service is 240 miles. Hopefully we can make it with one tank. By the way, apparently Coldfoot got its name in 1900 when gold prospectors who were traveling up the Coyococ River got cold feet and turned around. By 1902, Coldfoot had two roadhouses, two stores, seven saloons and a gambling house. I guess gold brought more people and business than oil. I don't know if I mentioned this, but most of the Dalton, from the Yukon River to Tulik Lake, is BLM land, so we could probably spend the night at any pullout, but since there are several developed campgrounds, why not use them, right? They're only $10 per night, first come, first served, and here's one of them, called Marion Creek. Here are some people tent camping. There's that white Airstream Argosy once again. Got a pretty nice campsite, now let's go pay. I'm out of $10 bills, so we're gonna have to write him a check. This one would have been nice too, but too many trees. I love trees, but Starlink doesn't, so we usually try to get the campsite with the least tall trees overhead. All right, let's go see the creek uh, that gives this campground its name. Marion Creek. Oh, check this out, manual pump. <laughs> If we need to fill up, that's gonna take a lot of muscle. Let's keep on walking. Such beautiful views. I think at one point there used to be a trail to the creek, but it is so overgrown, we're just gonna walk on the Dalton. There's hardly any traffic at this time of the day. There it is, that is Marion Creek. Brooks Range to the north. Upper atmosphere wind shear. Actually, this is the actual trail that goes to the falls. But I don't think we're gonna do it. Yeah, I think we're gonna save this one for next time. Actually, I'm gonna walk a few more steps. We have seen these blue blazes, but... Nah. Not in the mood today.
Well, it says it says here that our range is 272 miles, so we should be able to make it to Dead Horse. Where we're not gonna go is Wiseman. Maybe on the way back. Uh, right now, I just wanna push towards uh, Dead Horse and see if that uh, dump station is still there. Yeah, at this point, it is wishful thinking. But you never know. Everywhere you look, in every direction, it is just a gorgeous landscape. The road, lots of frost heaves, but at this point, I don't really care anymore. Here we have some construction on the bridge spanning Middle Fork Coyococ River 1. And yes, it is a mouthful. But what I wanted to point out is that this is where you could make a detour and drive three miles to the Arctic village of Wiseman. We're not sure whether it would be wise to visit with the trailer in tow, besides we spent one night there back in 2010, so we're going to skip it. Maybe we'll stop by on the way back. That Sukakpak mountain I see? It sure is. It's all coming back to me now. We're getting to the really good part. Sukakpak means Martin Deadfall in the Inupiat language. Let's stop real quick and admire this granite wall. Let's see if there's another viewpoint a little farther down the road. Look at all these frost hips. Let's stop one more time. Now crossing the Middle Fork Coyococ River 3. Yeah, I remember this place. It is like a rest area with outhouses and river access. Actually, this would be a great place to overnight. Let's stop for a few minutes. Here we are, small rest area here along the way. In the shadow of Sukukpak Mountain and... Uh, yeah, I believe this may have been the spot where we stopped. We were here in 2010. We actually walked on the river. I think the river has more water this year. Looks like at some point camping may have been allowed here. There's a fire ring. Right. You take a look at this place. It keeps getting better and better.
We are now getting to the best and most perilous part. We're going to begin gaining elevation. And as we do, we'll start seeing less and less trees. The grades will get steeper. As we climb all the way up to Adigan Pass, the Continental Divide, 4,739 feet, that is 1,422 meters above sea level. It can snow up there any time of the year. I can't wait. We've been so looking forward to this portion of the trip, as we leave civilization behind and embark on the longest section of highway anywhere in the United States without any services whatsoever. For this 240 mile stretch between Coldfoot and Dead Horse, we are truly on our own. We're following the Dietrich River almost to its headwaters, going up both in elevation and latitude. These trees only get to grow for a few months of the year and pretty soon will be so far north that they don't get to grow at all. We have reached the end of the Boreal Forest. Well, yeah, this is the end of the boreal forest, the beginning of the tundra. And there used to be a sign with the, with the northernmost uh, spruce tree here. But that tree was dead 13 years ago, so it must have fallen down or something. Because I no, lo I no longer see it here. They do have a sign, uh, you know, with the end of the forest and the beginning of the tundra. But that's about it. Here's the sign illustrating the end of the forest. Here's the sign illustrating the beginning of the tundra. That's it. The end of the forest. Who wants to see younger Robert? We are now at the site of the northernmost spruce tree, right here on the Dalton Highway. The ascent begins. This flat area to the east is the Chandler Shelf, near the headwaters of the Chandler River. Let's stop for the views. view. And here we have the towering peaks ahead of us. The summit a mere seven miles away. This is a very dangerous area in wintertime, prone to avalanches, and the DOT station here, I've heard they have artillery cannons that they fire at the mountains to clear the slopes above the highway. That must be a sight to see, even though it is dark most of the time. We've got ice, a lot of ice here on the river. I'm sure it was frozen solid not long ago. The ascent continues, getting steeper and steeper. Let's stop, because we took a picture right at this very spot 13 years ago. Rough road, steep grade, but the views make it all worth it. And we've made it to the top. This is Adigan Pass. I was just chatting with Jim, a viewer of the channel, and uh, 
Anyway, we've made it to the Ad to Adigan Pass, you know, the, the continental divide here in Alaska, uh, in the Brooks Range. And it goes to show that every trip is different. Uh, this, this time around, we haven't seen any wildlife at all. And uh, I don't know, I, I might, uh, you know, use some flashback video from 2010 because this mountain was full of dull ship. This whole area was full of dull ship. And uh, I mean, maybe we'll see some, some more wildlife up north. But uh, this gentleman here, he says that he hasn't seen much, just muck socks and uh, up in, in the north slope. So we'll see. It's uh, considerably colder up here, by the way. It's gotta be in the high 40s, but it's beautiful. sun has come out here at Aragon Pass, but still no wildlife. Now we have nowhere to go but down. So yeah, besides that lone moose at Grayling Lake and the numerous mosquitoes, wildlife has been very elusive. Just drive as we descend onto the rolling hills of the North Slope. I wonder what this is, this lone structure here in the middle of nowhere. Secret military installation perhaps? Alright, I better not speculate, but I'm curious. There it is once again, that now familiar vintage Airstream Argosy. We've been running into each other since back at the Arctic Circle. Coming up here on the left, pump station number 4. Galbraith Lake should be coming soon after. Galbraith Lake, by the way, is another BLM campground where we could potentially spend the night as we now leave the Brooks Range behind and begin the long drive on the North Slope. This is going to be the most remote and worst part of the road. Here we make a left. Even though it is early, I want to check out the campground. It is supposed to have the most amazing mountain views. Those are the amazing mountain views they were talking about, looking north. Looking south, it is just barren tundra, as far as the eye can see. Here's the Galbraith Lake Airport. And here's the campground. Same deal as the other ones, self-checking, 
but the mosquitoes here are relentless, so I don't know if we want to stay here on the way back. For now, we're just gonna keep on pushing north. There is no camping on this section of the road due to environmental concerns. And there is a research station run by the University of Alaska Fairbanks here at Tulik Lake. But access is by invitation only. What a desolate place this is. Road conditions are pretty bad around here and they are bound to get worse. There's a lot of construction going on coming up ahead. Now we're following a pilot car. And there's that Argosy once again. He probably passed us while we were at Galbraith Lake. Rough road. They were not kidding. To our left, Slope Mountain, the end of the BLM corridor. The Alaska Department of National Resources manages the rest of the way. This road is totally destroyed. It'll be a miracle if we make it unscathed. And our friend with the Argosy gave up. Actually, we later found out he had run out of gas. This would be pump station number three. We continue north on the nearly featureless tundra. There's the Sagavanirtak River, which we'll be following the rest of the way. It is, in the distance, Happy Valley, our next stop. This used to be a construction worker camp during the building of the pipeline, and apparently nowadays the camp serves as a base for scientists and all kinds of field workers. There seems to be camping here, but I don't know if you have to be authorized. And here's the airstrip, so I think we're going to go across the road there's another open area where we might be able to boondock. It's been a very long day, so we're just gonna call this one home for the night. Well, this is where we spent the night, just, uh, just across the highway from uh, my, um, Happy Valley. We're 80 miles from Prudhoe Bay, so let's hit the road. Yep. Gentlemen in the Argosy spent the night here too. Driving through the tundra in summer, it is almost scenic, kind of similar to the prairies of the American Midwest. Here on the left is the Sag River Overlook, which we blinked and we missed it. This landscape is also sometimes reminiscent of the Windows XP default wallpaper. And I can already see fog in the distance, probably due to our proximity to the Arctic Ocean. After this final hill, we are now descending onto the marshy wetlands of the coastal plain. Here's pump station number two. Now for the final stretch. It is so bumpy. All of a sudden, the smoothest blacktop. You almost feel like speeding. And let me tell you, after 350 miles of the worst road imaginable, this feels amazing. Coming up here on the right-hand side are the Franklin Bluffs. 
and I have a confession to make. I lost some of the footage from this final stretch of the trip. If I ever recover it, I promise there will be an extended version. Luckily, it was only one of the five cameras I'm using, so we've got some of it. Eventually, we see the dystopian skyline of Dead Horse over the horizon. This building here on the left, Dead Horse Camp, that's where our Arctic tour departs from. But first, we did some research about that mythical dump station in Dead Horse, and it seems to be at the Northern Oil Field Services gas station. It is by the airport, so that's where we're going first. The Dalton ends anticlimactically, right here at Colleen Lake. And while most services are to the right, we want to see if we can find that dump station. This seems to be it, but it is closed. And if I knew where the hole is, I could probably just use it, but I have no idea. Let's just put gas, find a general store, maybe they know something. Here's the Aurora Hotel, probably the best lodging option in Dead Horse. Even though I love the fact that we made it here, and I appreciate the uniqueness of our geographical location, let's face it, it is not an attractive town. Here we go, I believe this is the only public gas station currently in operation in Dead Horse. First, you have to go inside the automated kiosk, and swipe your credit card, and then you pump. Wait a minute, this thing is not working. Oh wait, there's a valve. Apparently, the previous customer left it closed. Now, let's go to the general store, take the requisite picture, get some information, and see if we can find some fuses because something else happened that I haven't told you about. As you can probably tell, we've made it to Dead Horse, Alaska. And uh, let's check out the store here. Yes, this is the symbolic end of the road and the photo opportunity. We couldn't find the fuse, but the lady directed us here to this building, which happens to be the North Slope Borough Sewer and Wastewater Treatment Plant. But apparently I don't have the right equipment. She gave me someone's number, but they didn't answer, so I give up. We're just gonna have to hold it. Let's go back to Dead Horse Camp and wait for our afternoon Arctic tour. So excited! Well, this is the culmination of our Arctic adventure. We're going to see the Arctic Ocean. I still don't know whether I'm going to do the polar bear plunge or not. Check out my fashionable shoes now. Hmm. Unfortunately, I lost most of my footage from the oil field, including some wildlife sightings. But at least we got the most important part, our arrival at the Arctic. And we have reached the Arctic Ocean right here. And uh, I may or may not jump into the water, we'll see. Our guide, a very knowledgeable and enthusiastic young man, is taking us to a natural gravel beach where we can wade in the frigid waters or go all the way if we so desire. It is pretty cold. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> Just a test run. It's the Arctic Ocean! <laughs> so here we are. This is so I, I didn't I did I didn't do it the whole way. I couldn't. It's uh, it's very cold. 
I guess it is a, a missed uh, opportunity, but anyway, it's very cool to be here in, in this unique place, of course. The, the Arctic Ocean, the northernmost point in America, I guess, that you can drive to, you know, from, from mainland, you know, you don't have to fly to or anything like that. Uh, we just came on that white bus right there. Now we're going back to the oil, to the oil through the oil fields. And let, look over the and, uh, shape. Yeah. Look, look it's uh, it's very cool to be here once again. And as you as you can see, every every experience is different. The last time we were here, there was even ice on the water, and, and now the fog is even lifting. So. Saying goodbye to the Arctic, it is time to go back. What goes up must go down. What goes north must go south. Now that we have reached the end of the road. Saying goodbye to our friend with the Argo Sea, we're going to cover as many miles as possible. We want to be back in Fairbanks tomorrow. As much as we have enjoyed this unique experience, the inconvenience of having our holding tanks full has somehow taken it all, and we're ready to be back and take a long shower. One thing for sure, the return trip is going to be equally if not more scenic than the trip north. Even though we're going to drive by the same places, it is always a different experience depending on which direction you're going. And the weather might be different too. For example, I see some menacing clouds up ahead, so we may be in for a muddy ride going back south. The Dalton Highway is considered part of the Pan American Highway, their horse being its northern terminus. Now, wouldn't that be an adventure driving from Dead Horse to Ushuaia, Argentina? And after seeing the Arctic, taking a cruise to Antarctica. But one adventure at a time. This is the Sag River Overlook, the one we missed on the way north, so let's stop. Unfortunately, the camera I used was the one that lost all the footage, and the rooftop GoPro is starting to malfunction. Rooftop GoPro is going to crash any minute, it is glitching a lot. Maybe it got wet inside. And it's gone. This is the worst part. For we were following the pilot car earlier. There's Tulik Lake. It may not look like it, but it is past 8 p.m. There's Galbraith Lake. And the Rainbow. Pump Station 4. Anyway. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, anything is legit dirty <laughs> from the Dalton Highway. This is where we spent the night last night, which was actually very quiet. We, we decided not to go to the actual campground. The mosquitoes were equally bad there. So, um, and, you know, they, the mosquitoes just realized I came out of the camper and they're starting to swarm. That's what they do. Woo! So, um, yeah, last night it, um, the GoPro failed halfway, so you're not going to be able to see how we arrived here, but it rained a lot. So, uh, both Minitini and Starship are muddy, and we have reached the limits of our boondocking capabilities. Both holding tanks are full and uh, the closest uh, dump station is still over five hours away, but yeah, I'm gonna put gas in Coldfoot, which is um, approximately two hours away and then down to five mile campground. Uh, how do you like my fashionable look? At least they won't be bothering me in the face anymore. <laughs> oh, those mosquitoes, they weren't kidding. I had forgotten. <laughs> this, by the way, the Aragon River. Here we are, just a few miles south of Galbraith Lake. And we're about to cross the Brooks Range. It is
we say beautiful morning, so let's hit the road. I think I like this part of the Dalton better going southbound. It seems more scenic, as we are about to start gaining elevation, climbing back to Adigan Pass. We're enjoying beautiful weather here, but I see some menacing clouds and a rainbow over the Brooks Range. So, there may be rain in our future here. picture-perfect rainbow as we approach the mountains. Getting a little bit of rain here as we begin the final ascent. There's some kind of antenna up there and that mysterious structure once again. Up and up and up, non-stop. Now for the final stretch. And we've reached the top. Now what? Oh no. We almost got zero visibility. What a difference in weather between the northern and southern slopes. This is soupy mess. The road, pure mud. We're back in Boreal Forest. It looks like the rain is going to start letting up a little bit, which is a good thing. This wasn't being fun anymore. Is that sunshine and the hint of blue sky I see in the distance? Unbelievable! And 
And there is once again Sukakpak Mountain. I was getting worried back there, but it has turned out to be a beautiful drive once again. And we've made it back to cold foot, and we're running on fumes, so let's refuel. Today it turns out it is the other pump, the one that works. It figures. $164.11 to fill up at the world's northernmost, at least America's northernmost truck stop. Take a good look. Minitini may never be this dirty again. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is incredibly crazy. Now we've got three hours until the only dump station in the entire Dalton Highway. Let me tell you, if they put one in, uh, if they open a new one in, in Dead Horse, they will make a fortune. Crossing the Arctic Circle once again. Ooh, what is this? I think I'm on the wrong side of this thing. Ooh, it is the roller coaster. And we have finally reached the five mile campground. Let's see if it is true, if that dump station is still working. Relief at last. I try to flush, but there is no water. That is just Incredible. <laughs> now approaching the Yukon River, and it is time to refuel one last time. We're on the home stretch. By the way, we took like a two-hour break at Yukon River Camp, took a much-needed shower, got something to eat, and now we're ready and refreshed for the four-hour drive to the Fairbanks KOA. In conclusion, I must say the road was in much worse condition than expected, than we remembered anyway. And back in 2010, places like Coldfoot still had that ice road truckers allure. On the other hand, 
Starlink was a game changer. In 2010, there was no cell phone signal whatsoever between Fairbanks and Dead Horse, so you felt really isolated. Even though nowadays there's coverage in cold food as well, we didn't even notice since we were connected all the time. It was great to do research on the fly. Surprisingly, we only opened the milepost once, only to find the outdated information about the dump station in Dead Horse. Although, to be fair, the Bureau of Land Management's own guide got that wrong too. Will we do this again? I don't know. Third time might be the charm, and maybe I'll build up enough courage to take the polar bear plunge. I might do it with a truck camper or a camper van, and maybe allocate even more time. I'll try not to leave my water pump on. I think we got very lucky this time, not getting a flat tire or a more serious breakdown. Not even a cracked windshield. All I know is that the north is still calling, so we'll return someday. And just like that, we have conquered the Dalton Highway. Minitini certainly looks the part. Minitini 4, by the way, has performed great uh, on the Dalton. Just a few minor adjustments we have to do inside, but structurally, I mean, you saw how bad that road was. And uh, yeah, this may be the last time we do the Dalton. We did it by car, now we've done it by RV. And uh, yeah, to think we went all the way up there to the northernmost point that you can arrive by car in America. The, the northernmost in the world is actually in Norway. All right, I think that's it. I mean, look at that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to clean this, um, but that's it. On the, on the next one, we're going to Denali National Park. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road which today, today was the Dalton Highway. Eventually, we made it back to the KOA and got into one of those nice pull-through sites. And we were able to sort of clean Mini Tini 4. Yeah, it's still the one available. Riding in my 